I want to start, I want to take the liberty right before I introduce everything to start very different today. Uh, listen to these words, please. It's a poem. <clears throat> As the cloud is consumed and vanisheth away, so does the body of man after death decay. He shall return no more to his place. No dear ones shall see his face. In the anguish of spirit, my bed shall not comfort me, I may say, but my couch shall not ease complaints or bitterness delay. I loathe it. Yes, I loathe it. Oh, this fact that all I have is today. I shall see good, but I would not live all the way. Oh, how can I, how can I ignore the smell of blood and the alarm of war? Arrows of pain, needle-like sorrows, winds of strife. It is easier to choose the losses of death over the winnings of life. Oh, preserver of soul. Forgive us our insanity. Let us hear a voice from heavenly family. I know, God's respond, I know. I know all you have is today, but stop focusing on the clock, lest you become an easy prey as a weak pigeon to a hungry hawk. Stand still, do not sway. As you live, let your living talk. For to some, all you can say is with the way you walk. Hope, trust, and obey. Look up with perseverance and always pray. There will be tossings to and fro, but only till the dawning of the new day. Behold the Lord in his hands. He holds the world, creator, redeemer, savior. He does all things right. Yes, he has power like dynamite. Like the story behind a germinating seed. He was led to die before he could live to lead. For love he suffered to supply my need. I desire to find him and by him be freed. I need you, Lord. I need you now. In full accord, before thee I bow. O Lord, thine heart is set upon humanity, yet our days are but vanity. Thank you, Lord, for the power of your charity that will raise from the grave those that did not compromise their Christianity. Amen. May the Lord bless and protect and give some power and strength for the family right now as we together look at this and understand that God, is, God knows exactly what's going on. Friends, God is amazing. And in Revelation, that's exactly what we have, a revelation of Jesus Christ. And today, we will continue with the series, a Revelation of Jesus Christ. And our message today is going to be delivered by Maboshe Makesa, coming from Georgia. His message today is entitled, what an amazing title, The Magnificent, Magnificent, how do you pronounce that word? Magnificent Kingdom. The Amazing Kingdom. You can look at it in any other words that fits. But that day we know that in that kingdom there will be no death, no crying. Tears are going to be wiped away. We're coming live from Wachita Hills College campus. We would like to welcome those that are watching online and for everyone that are here. Welcome and enjoy the Sabbath as the Lord speaks to our heart. But before Maboshe gets to speak, we're going to hear an amazing song from our choir here at OHC. Thank you so much.
Let's open up with a word of prayer. Father, Lord, what a topic. This morning, Lord, we're inviting your presence, and I'm just asking, Father, that you'll draw close. Speak through me, O Lord. May your message be heard clearly. And Father, I'm asking for your Holy Spirit in a very special way, that I may say the right things, that the people in the audience may receive a blessing, and that those who are watching online may truly receive a blessing as well. I thank you so much for your love, and I thank you so much for your grace. And Lord, I give myself to you at this moment, and I'm excited to hear Jesus speak. Thank you so much, Father. Cleanse me from self, cleanse me from sin, and we ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Good morning again. We've been going on an interesting journey through the Bible. And have you all been blessed? Amen. I want to welcome those who are watching online. We thank you so much for joining us for the Revelation of Jesus series. And in the times that we're living in, we really do need a revelation of Jesus Christ, a fresh revelation every single day. And, you know, it's amazing the things that God wants to show us in his word, the powerful truths and the powerful principles that we can all live by. And in the world that we live in today, lots of people are looking forward to different things. And people are looking forward to many different things, especially in light of the pandemic that we're living in. People are looking forward to the end of, of the COVID-19 virus. And you know, in my life, I remember growing up, I looked forward to different events. I remember when I was younger that I would look forward to my cousins coming over for the weekend or going over to their house and spending the night with them. I remember when I was in elementary school through high school, I would look forward to the field trip that was coming up. And I remember I would look forward to summer break because that was when school was going to be over. But like I said earlier, people look forward to things like marriage. People look forward to the next paycheck that is going to come. People look forward to having children. People look forward to tons of things. But is there something that God has given us to look forward to? Is there something in this world today that God has given us a hope? And today, this morning, we're going to be looking at the magnificent kingdom. We're going to be talking about something that God has promised us his precious children. And we're going to be looking at some promises, some amazing hopes and comforts that the Lord has given us. But open with me in your Bibles if you want to follow along to John chapter 14. Jesus gave us a precious promise. He said, I go to prepare a what? A place for you. Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. He has gone to prepare something for just his children. And you know, it's interesting, when you think of preparing something for somebody, you put lots of time into it, especially if there's someone close to you. 
I remember when I lived in Georgia, I had a good friend of mine, and they wanted to surprise their parents. They wanted to do something for them that was going to help them to, you know, kind of have a time alone for themselves. Because their parents, they worked a lot throughout the week, and they were like, you know what? We want mom and dad to have an opportunity to spend some time together alone during the weekend. So basically, they went and they got like this, this, they saved up all their money for the next couple of paychecks for their job. And, you know, they got a nice hotel room and they even booked like a nice place at a fancy restaurant in Atlanta, Georgia. And they put lots of time into what they were trying to do. And it was very amazing to see how everything turned out because they were so excited for their parents to come and see this. And you can only imagine how excited Jesus is for the pace that he is preparing for us. But where did he go? He says, I go to prepare a place for you. In Luke chapter 24, verse 51, the Bible says, Now it came to pass, while he blessed them, that he was parted from them and carried up into what? Into heaven. Friends, Jesus went to heaven. And he didn't just go to heaven to relax. He didn't just go to heaven, you know, to kick back and say, You know what? I've had lots of fun on earth. Or, you know, I've had a tough time on earth. Now I'm back inside of heaven and I just get to sit back. On top of being our high priest, he wants to prepare a place for us. And not just any place, but he's prepared for us a city. If someone came to you today and said, hey, Moboshe, I have a city just for you. What would come to your mind? What would be some thoughts that would run through your mind? You know, Jesus has gone to prepare a city for us. And what is this city called? The Bible calls it in Revelation 21, verse 10, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. This is John, the beloved speaking, the one whom Jesus loved. And John had the privilege of getting this vision of this city. And it says, and showed me the great city, the holy what? Jerusalem, descending from from God. Revelation 21, verse 2 says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of where? Out of heaven. So John saw this city coming down from heaven. He saw this city was called the holy what? Jerusalem. And it's interesting, he said it was coming down from heaven. But what is this city like? What are some details about this city that we can actually see? In Revelation chapter 21, verse 11, the Bible says, Having the glory of God, her light was like a most precious stone like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Friends, the glory of God is filling up the light of the city. I don't know if you guys have ever looked outside when it's like um, after it gets done raining or when the dew is on the grass. And you see when the sun hits the grass, it starts making like this sparkly rainbow type looking thing. Or if you've ever looked inside of a diamond, if you've ever gotten close to a diamond, and you look at how the light hits the diamond, and it begins to make like a little rainbow. And it's really interesting, the Bible says that the city was like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and it was lighted with the glory of God. You can only picture the types of things that John was seeing. And this morning, friends, you're going to have to use your sanctified imagination to see these things. The Bible also describes the size of the city. It says, the city lies four square, and he measured the city with the reed. So the city, he was describing it kind of like a cube, all the same size, all around. And then it says in Revelation chapter 21, verse 16, 12,000 furlongs, the length and the breadth and the height of it were equal. I looked up 12,000 furlongs, and that's about 15,000 miles in perimeter all around. 1,500 miles, I'm sorry. 1,500 miles in perimeter all around. And you know what's interesting? I was trying to compare this with something that we might recognize. Who knows what the biggest state in the country of North America, I would say. And who knows what the biggest state in North America is? Alaska. Did you know that the length of Alaska from north to south is 1,400 miles? This city is 1,500 miles all around. Friends, this is a huge city. What does it look like inside of the city? The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 21, verse 12, and she had a great and high wall with how many gates? 10 gates? 12 gates. And then it says in Revelation 21, verse 13, three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. And not only just that, the Bible describes these gates as 12 pearls. And each individual gate was one pearl. Now, it's very interesting that the Bible describes these gates as pearls. Do you guys remember, or you might have heard of this story if you're familiar with the Bible, but in the Bible, Jesus gives a parable, a parable of a merchant man. 
And this merchant man in the parable, he found a field. And this field was so precious. There was something inside of this field so precious that he was willing to sell everything that he had to buy the field. And you know, it's interesting when Jesus was telling this parable, he was basically comparing it to how, you know, when someone finds the gospel and they see how precious the gospel is, how sweet the gospel is to their life, how amazing it's touched their hearts, how they're willing to give up anything for this gospel, the pearl of great price, they're willing to sell everything. But there was another application to the parable, how Jesus, when he left heaven, he came down from heaven willing to give up everything for the pearl of great price. And guess who that pearl was? You and me. Friends, the 12 gates of this city are made of pearls. Could it be that when we walk into the gates, Jesus is saying, my precious pearls are entering into the gates, and I value them so much that I've made the doors just to let them know that I value them this much. It's amazing the the way the kingdom is set up. In Revelation 21, verse 19, the Bible says, The foundations of the walls of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was what? Jasper. And it goes on. The second, sapphire. The third, chaldony. The fourth, emerald. The fifth, sardonyx. The the sixth, sardius. The seventh, chrysolite. The eighth, beryl. And it goes on. It says the ninth is topaz, the tenth is chrysoprase, the eleventh is jacketh, and the twelfth is amethyst. Friends, I don't even know what some of these pearls are, and I wish I could have found pictures. I was looking all over to find if I could just see pictures of some of these pearls, and the pictures just didn't do justice. But you know, people go all around the world. Wars have been fought just to dig up precious gems out of the ground. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. These are valuable, precious pearls. In the Bible of Ezekiel chapter 28, the angel which God created with the most beauty, with the most beauty was covered with many of these pearls. He was designed, made out of these pearls. So now God, when he's making the kingdom, he's making the kingdom with the walls to be made of these precious pearls, some of the most precious gems that the world has ever seen. It's beautiful. And how about the inside? The Bible says in Revelation 21 verse 18, the wall of the building was of jasper. Jasper. I've never even seen a jasper. And then Revelation 21 verse 21 says, the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. Now this was very interesting. Who here has ever seen pure gold before? Okay, I've seen it in pictures. I've never seen it in person. But pure gold in its pure state is transparent. And I don't know if in heaven is going to be even purer than the pure gold that we have seen here on earth. But it's interesting because gold has a significance in the Bible. Turn with me in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 3. Gold represents something in the Bible. Revelation chapter 3, and we're going to look at verse 18. The book of Revelation is the last book of the Bible. So if you have trouble looking for books in the Bible, just go all the way to the end, and you're going to go to Revelation chapter 3, and what verse? Verse 18. And when you get there, say, precious pearl. Amen. All right, so Jesus here is speaking to the seven churches. And Jesus, in his amazing love, he was writing letters to these seven churches. And he had a message for every single one of them. And the last church, the church of Laodicea, the church, the church of the people of the judgment, he had a message for them, but in, he, he, he gave encouragement to every single one of the churches. But this church, he didn't really tell them what they were doing well. He had a rebuke for them. And if you look in verse 19, it says that it's because he loved them. So even the rebukes that God gives, it's because of his love. But in verse 18, he gave them a solution. He said, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the what? What is being tried in the fire? Gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and in white raiment. So keep that in mind. What is being tried in the fire? Gold. Now go with me in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. To get to 1 Peter, you're going to go backwards. You're going to go to Jude, then you're going to go to 3 John, 2 John, 1 John, and then you'll run into Peter. You'll run to 2 Peter, and then you'll go to 1 Peter. So we're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 7. When you get there, say jewel. All right, 1 Peter 1 verse 7 says, The trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perisheth, though it be tried with what? Now, what is being tried with fire here? Our faith. 
In Revelation chapter 3, verse 18, it said gold was being tried in the fire. In 1 Peter 1, verse 7, it's saying our faith is being tried in the fire. The Bible compares gold to your faith. And it's interesting. How, what does faith have to do with Christians and the way they live today? In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7, the Bible says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. So how we walk here on earth or how we live here on earth. The Bible uses walking as your way of life. How you live here on earth is by what? Faith. But in heaven, where we're going to be walking is on pure gold. It's like God is trying to say, you've been walking by faith your whole life. Because you've been walking by faith, you've been looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, you now have been transformed into my image. And as you look down into the transparent gold and you see that beautiful reflection of not what you have done, but of what I have done through faith, you can be encouraged that it's all because of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Friends, it's so beautiful how God has set up everything. But what about the source of lights in the kingdom? The Bible says in Revelation 21 verse 23, the city had no need of the sun or moon or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. Now, this is really interesting. Our king's face is going to be brighter than the sun. Do you know what the Bible says about the glory of Jesus? In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, the Bible says, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, to do what? Has shined into our hearts to give what? the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, and is it found in the arms of Jesus? In the face of Jesus Christ. So it's interesting, friends, the knowledge of God's character, and if you were to describe God with one word, what would that word be? Love. God is love. The knowledge of his love is shining in the face of Jesus. But it's interesting, it says that heaven is going to be lighted with the glory of God and the glory of the Lamb, who is Jesus Christ. It's like his love is going to be so powerful that he's not only physically going to be lighting up the whole city, but his love is going to be everywhere we turn. Everywhere we look, we're going to see the love of Jesus. Everywhere we turn, we're going to be reminded of his love. It's going to be so precious how Jesus wants to let us know that it's because of my love that you're able to see while you're here. It's because of my love that we have the lights of this place over here. It's amazing. But what about food? What is it that we're going to eat in heaven? Are we going to be eating cookies and cakes in heaven? Are we going to be eating Different types of food that are going to destroy our body. I'm not going to give more examples. But what is it that we're going to be eating and drinking in heaven? Let's look at what the Bible says. In Revelation 22, verse 1, the Bible says, He showed me a pure what? A pure river of life. Friends, we're not going to need water filters in heaven. We're not going to need the little machines where you pour it inside the water and you have to wait for it to go through the little filtering tube, and then you get a good drink of water. We're going to have a pure river of life. It's going to be amazing to drink. But not only just that, the Bible says in Revelation 22, verse 2, on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare 12 manner of fruits. Have you all ever seen a tree that has 12 different types of fruits? It says here, and yielded her fruits every single month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Friends, the fruits are going to be amazing. And this means a lot to me because I used to hate fruits. And I'm very picky with fruit for those who know me. But we're going to have 12 types of fruits. You know, it's interesting. One of my brothers came to me last night, good brother. And he said, Moboshe, they have grapefruit and it's sweet. And you know, when he said the grapefruit was sweet, I thought in my mind, man, sweet is a very relative term. But you know, in heaven, we're not going to worry about that. We're not going to worry about whether or not the grapefruit is sweet. We are going to know for sure that every fruit that we pull off the tree is sweet. And you know, if there's people who like bitter and sour fruits, God will have some fruits for you as well. But I know for sure that God is going to have sweet fruits, mangoes and oranges and watermelons. And who knows what colors are going to be, black and white and yellow and purple and pink. God is going to have so many different fruits to satisfy our taste buds. Amen? But where will the city be located? John saw in Revelation 21, verse 2, and I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. And Isaiah 65, verse 17, for behold, I created new heavens and a new earth. So if it's coming down from heaven, where is it coming to? 
It's coming to the earth. He says again in Isaiah 66, verse 22, For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, Jesus is basically letting us know that he's going to recreate the earth. And guess what, friends? We are going to watch him. Can you imagine watching Jesus recreate the earth? Him saying, let there be, and the mountain comes forward. And you hear all the sounds, and then he creates the animals, and the animals are going to be there. And you watch how he makes all the animals and makes all the birds, and who knows if he's going to make new types of animals. We don't know, but we're going to watch him create all these things. We're going to see the power of our Lord, the majesty of our king, and what he's able to do with the power of his word. And look at what it says about the animals. The Bible says here in Isaiah 66, 65, verse 25, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt nor destroy. Friends, we're not going to need any more zoos. We're not going to have to go to the zoo and stand behind a, you know, a cage or some glass and watch the lions. We're not going to have to do that anymore. The lions are going to be together with the lambs. The lambs are going to be together with the oxes, and they're all going to be eating the same thing, grass. And you know what's interesting? None of the animals are going to die by each other or by human beings. Amen? So that means we won't be eating the animals either. Praise God. You know, it's really interesting. There was actually a story. And there was a story of actually a drug dealer in Atlanta, Georgia, and he was holding these three animals. And guess what three animals they were? A tiger, a bear, and a lion. And you might be asking, how is it possible that he was holding these three animals? And actually, he was holding it in his basement, but they were cubs. And basically, they found out about it, and they saw that he was actually treating these animals very poorly. So he got caught, and he was taken care of, but the animals were taken when they were cubs. But they were raised together. But they noticed something about these three animals. They noticed that they would play with each other. They wouldn't fight each other. You know, they would kind of wrestle like brothers and siblings, but they wouldn't hurt each other or anything along those lines. They grew up with each other, loving each other. A lion, a tiger, and a bear. Where does that take place? Friends, it's taking place somewhere in America, but friends, it's even better because in heaven, it's going to take place everywhere. The Bible even says in Isaiah 11, verse 6, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the little child shall lead them. The Bible says the nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole, and the wean child shall put his hand in the viper's den. Mothers, how many of you would take your child to a snake's hole and say, put your hand inside of the little snake's hole? No one. I wouldn't even do that, and I'm grown. <laughs> but it's interesting. The Bible says that in heaven, every single baby is going to be free to roam. None of the animals are going to hurt people. And you know what's interesting? I have a fear, God is working on my heart with this, of an eight-legged creature. Who can guess what that creature is? A spider. Did you know that even the spiders are going to be friendly? Friends, it takes lots of faith for me to say that. But it's truth. None of the animals are going to harm us. Jesus is going to be right there. All of his animals are going to show the character of love. Every single one of his animals are going to be mingling with us. I'm going to go up to the tigers and rub my head up against them. I'm going to go up to the elephants and jump on top of them if I'm able to and ride them. And it's going to be amazing. Friends, we're going to be able to run with the cheetahs. It's going to be beautiful, all the things that we can do with God's creation. But not only just the animals, look at human beings. The Bible says in Isaiah 35 verse 5, The eyes of the blind shall be open. Friends, I've been wearing glasses since I was in fifth grade. No more glasses, friends. For those who have LASIK surgery, I'm going to be joining you. And my eyesight is going to be even better. Friends, we won't need contacts. We won't need glasses. We're going to be able to see so far. We're going to be able to see our friends all the way across, miles away, and to recognize their faces. The Bible says in Isaiah 35, verse 5, If you're deaf, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. You're going to be able to hear conversations about Jesus miles away. And you're going to be able to say, wow. Is that Enoch speaking? Oh, I need to run and go see Enoch. Is that Moses talking? Oh, I need to go and see Moses. We're going to be able to hear so many different things. It's going to be beautiful. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 35, verse 6, Then shall the lame man leap as in hearts, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. Oh, friends, I cannot wait to sing in heaven. And those who have never spoken, who might have a speech impediment or something on this earth, you're going to be able to talk fluently, and it's going to be precious, friends. Amen? But what about sickness and funerals? Will there be any more death in heaven? 
Will there be any more pain in heaven? Look at what the Bible says. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 33, verse 24, the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. Friends, there will be no more coronavirus. There will be no more HIV. There will be no more cancer. The Bible also tells us in Revelation 21, verse 4, there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Friends, those family members who have passed away because of a sickness or some type of disease, that is going to be no more in the kingdom of heaven. Amen? God is going to take those things away forever. And all of the bad memories that we have because of these things shall not be remembered. In Isaiah 65, verse 17, the former shall not be remembered nor come to mind. We're going to have so many amazing things to occupy our minds that we won't even remember the old things of the past. You know, I do something called literature evangelism. And what literature evangelism is, is basically you go door to door and you pass out books. And you share these books with people about the love of Jesus. And there's health books and many different types of books. But you know, in this occupation, you meet people who are having a bad day. And sometimes they're having a bad day and they meet you and then you might have a bad day after you're done meeting them. And sometimes you can have multiple experiences like that after you're done. But later on, you can have such a powerful experience where you meet someone who is so happy to see you. And at the end of the day, when you're mingling with your friends and you're sharing your stories with one another, you're not thinking about the bad day that you had because there's so many beautiful things that you can think about. There's so many amazing experiences that you've just had to remind you that there's so much better to look forward to. And friends, in heaven, that's the way it's going to be. We're not going to remember the bad things of this earth. The Bible also tells us about our bodies, 1 Corinthians 15, 53, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Friends, our bodies will be completely brand new. No more decaying, no more dying. The Bible says in Isaiah 65, verse 20, no more shall an infant from there live but a few days, nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days. Friends, no more will babies die at a young age. No more will it take place to where they're not able to grow up. Jesus is going to give them life. And the way, the truth, and the life is going to be there to take care of them, to make sure they never pass away again. No more will old people die because of old age and get in decay and all these other things that come in Alzheimer's. Jesus is going to be their freshness. In Isaiah 40, verse 31, the Bible says, they shall run and not be what? Weary. They shall walk and not faint. For those who are part of the running club at the school that I am a part of, we know what it's like to run and get weary. Sometimes you're running towards the end and you have to push to make it towards the end. But some people are already experiencing some of the heavenly body and they just keep on running and some people run two laps and four laps. But it's amazing, friends. Every single one of us are going to be able to run fast with energy. The parents are going to be able to keep up with the children. The children will keep up with the parents and there's going to be so much joy. Friends, the Bible says they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Can you imagine what it's like to fly? To fly with the eagles to be able to fly with the angels, to fly all around the earth and explore the beauties of what God has created is going to be a beautiful experience. But when it comes to our bodies, what will it actually be like? Are we going to be like ghosts, like the way the television portrays? And are we going to be able to stick our hands through each other? Is that the way it's going to be? Or are we actually going to have flesh and bones? Look at this account in Luke chapter 24, verse 31. This was after Jesus had resurrected. And when Jesus resurrected, he already had his new body. The Bible says, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. Friends, we're still going to have flesh and bones. It's just never going to decay. And it's going to be so beautiful that we're even going to recognize each other. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12, then shall I know even as also I am known. And it's really beautiful because when we get to heaven and your aunts and your uncles who may have passed away many, many years ago, your grandparents who might have passed away when you were but a little child, whatever it may be, they're going to run up to you and they're going to recognize you. They're going to see your face and they're going to say, is that my nephew? Is that my son? Is that my best friend? We're all going to know each other, friends. We're all going to be able to recognize each other. Amen? It's going to be so precious. But what will we do? Sometimes people ask the question, are we going to get bored in heaven? I remember when I was at a specific church, and I remember I was sitting with the young people, and they said, Moboshe, I don't want to go to heaven because they're not going to have basketball. They're not going to have the NBA finals, and they're not going to have football. 
And I was like, you know what? I can relate with them because once upon a time, I thought it was kind of dread. It was kind of sad to be in eternity and not doing anything that I like to do at that moment in my life. But what is God going to have us do? Do we have any architects in the building? Because the Bible says, Isaiah 65, verse 21, and they shall build houses and inhabit them. What type of homes are we going to build? Friends, Jesus is going to give you the privilege of building your own house with your own signature, whatever it is that you like. The Bible says in Zechariah 8, verse 5, the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Friends, the children are going to be playing with one another in innocent fun, happiness and joy, and getting to know each other more. The Bible says in Isaiah 35, verse 10, the ransomed of the Lord shall come to Zion with songs and what type of joy? Everlasting joy. Friends, the choir in heaven is going to be sweet. It's going to be amazing. We're going to all be able to sing. Everyone's going to be up front singing in the choir. And it's going to be so beautiful. We'll all be able to sing. I don't know what types of parts. I personally, I want to sing tenor and bass. That's just me. But who knows what it's going to be like. We're going to sing praises to God forever. But you know what's interesting? Jesus tells us the purpose of eternal life and living forever. And this is life what? eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Friends, all of eternity, we're going to get to know Jesus. When we sing songs, it's going to be about Jesus. When we build houses, it's going to be about Jesus. When we play with one another, it's going to be about Jesus. And no longer will we have to talk about Jesus and he's not there. Jesus is going to be right there teaching us all of these things, teaching us how he built the animals and how he designed the planets and how he did so many different types of things that we wonder about. It's all going to be about Jesus. It's going to be precious. The Bible says in Psalms 19, verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. Friends, everywhere we look is going to show the glory of God. When we look up into space, we are going to see all the constellations, all the stars. We'll have wings, so we probably will even be able to travel to the planets themselves. And Jesus is going to teach us what it is about the sun and what it is about the planets and the, the galaxies that science has never, ever explored. We're probably going to be able to see all of those things. Oh, it's an exciting experience to look forward to, friends. In Isaiah chapter 66, verse 22, the Bible says, For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. There's another activity that I'm looking forward to, one that we're going to have every single week. The Bible says, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Oh, friends, can you imagine what it's like to have Sabbath in heaven Billions and billions of angels coming together. All of the human beings coming together from all around. And who knows if there's other people out there in the other worlds. They would come around too. And guess who the preacher is going to be? It's not me. It's going to be Jesus. Oh, Jesus is going to preach to us, friends. He's going to tell us about his love. And we're going to sing praises to him. Can you imagine the testimony time? about how when we travel to other planets and when we do different things, how we're going to say, I learned this about Jesus today, and I learned this about Jesus. And can you imagine the look on Jesus' face as he sees his children learning about him, seeing new things about him? Parents, you know what it's like to see your children happy about something sincere and joyful and something that's not harmful? There's joy in your heart because you see that your child is actually enjoying themselves. And the look on Jesus' face to see that we are enjoying ourselves and it never has to stop. Oh, the Bible says in Psalm 16, verse 11, in your presence is fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Friends, there's gonna be beautiful things in heaven to keep our attention. But friends, I can do everything I can up here in my power and with God to try to describe to you what heaven will be like. But my words do no justice. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Friends, Jesus is going to blow your minds with what he has in heaven. He's longing to show you what it's like. But friends, there are conditions to enter the kingdom of heaven. There are things to look forward to, 
But God wants us to know now, what does it take to be able to dwell into the kingdom of heaven with him safely? The Bible says in Matthew 5, verse 5, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Friends, it was pride that kicked the first group of people out of heaven. It was pride that was found in Lucifer's heart that caused him to eventually change his name to Satan and to come out of the kingdom. And friends, Jesus wants you to be meek and lowly. And if we have pride problems in our hearts, there's something for Jesus to do on here, amen, on here on earth. And the Bible says in Revelation 22, verse 14, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter into the gates of the city. Friends, it was disobedience that allowed Adam and Eve to be taken out of Eden. And friends, it's obedience to God that's going to allow us to safely dwell with him in the kingdom of heaven. God is not going to be able to excuse our sins, not because he's mean. It's not that God is saying, this is just the way I like it and that's just the way it is. But it's because look at this earth. Look at what the world looks like when you're not obeying the commandments of God. Look at what the world looks like when there's sin and pain and suffering. And friends, God cannot safely welcome you into his kingdom. The same way you wouldn't allow a murderer to come into your house if you knew he was a murderer and he said he was a murderer and you could see in his heart that he was a murderer, you wouldn't allow him to come inside of your house and sleep with your family. So what makes you think that God is going to allow us to enter into his house if we have pride, if we have lust, if we have selfishness and bitterness and fault finding and looking for all of those things, if we get irritated very easily, it won't be safe to bring us in the kingdom of heaven. But Jesus says, if you can overcome these things, you shall inherit all things. And the question you may ask is, how can I overcome? Jesus says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Friends, first we have to die. We have to die to self, and then we have to be reborn. And then it says here, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. When we have faith in Jesus as our personal Savior, then he can give us the victory. We don't have to depend upon ourselves, but we can trust in Jesus that he is going to give us the victory. Friends, there's something that I look forward to the most, something that I look forward to more than anything else, and that is spending time with Jesus. You know, honestly, I could care less about the animals. If I never see the animals, if I never taste the food, if I can just spend time with Jesus every single day, oh, that's going to be sweet. It's going to be a precious experience. And the Bible says in Revelation 21, verse 3, God himself shall be with them. Friends, no more long-distance relationships. No more will we have to be separate from our Lord. We're going to be face-to-face with Jesus Christ, our Savior. Oh, and it's going to be so precious. And friends, we long to make it to the kingdom of heaven. But God is asking you, what are you willing to give up here on earth to be able to make it to that kingdom? And now our friends are going to come up and sing a song, and I want you to listen to the words. Has this ever been your sentiment? Has this ever been something that you've thought of in your heart where you've longed for the kingdom of heaven? But after listening to everything that we've seen today, maybe this can be the language that you can have inside of your heart.
He has done so much for me. Sometimes I think I can stay here no longer. I feel very lonely here for I see a better land. And all that I have leaves like a dove, then would I fly away and be at rest. I want to go to heaven. I want to hear the voice of Jesus. I will gird myself and serve you, for you suffered much for me. And when I get to heaven, I want to sit at Jesus' table, oh, to eat the fruit of that land, to go back to earth no more. Sometimes I think I can stay here no longer. I feel very lonely here for I've seen a better land. And all that I had wings like a dove, then when I fly away, I am the address. And You know, there's someone who's been to heaven, and he knows heaven better than any single one of us. His name is Satan. You know, I wonder, I remember reading somewhere one time that Satan probably knows how amazing heaven is. And because he knows that heaven is so sweet and that he no longer is allowed to go back because of his choices, that he's going to do everything that he can to keep you out of the kingdom of heaven. There was a story of a young man. He was rich. He was a rich, young ruler. And you know, young people have trouble with seeing the value of things within their time. And he got to meet Jesus, the God of the universe, in the flesh. And Jesus actually invited him to come and follow him. Can you imagine what that would be like? To meet Jesus face to face, to come and invite you to follow him and be one of his followers? And Jesus invited him, but he said on one condition. He said, go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor. And you know what this man did? He thought about all of his riches. He thought about his fancy cars, his nice clothes, his amazing reputation, the beautiful women that he might have had, the reputation, the, the fame, the popularity. He thought about all these things. And he said, I cannot let go of all of that to follow Jesus. You know, there are people today, God has given them the talents of beauty, and they focus so much on their beauty and their, their, their looks that they would rather hold on to that than go and spend eternity with a better, beautiful body and the beautiful King of Kings, Jesus. There's people on this earth today who have money and millions of dollars, billions of dollars, so much money that they don't even know what to do with it. And they're saying, I would rather hold on to that than to enter the kingdom of heaven. There are people today who have popularity and all of their friends like them. And, you know, they have this reputation with their friends. And, you know, if their friends knew that they were going to go to heaven and dwell with the king of the universe, that they would be called lame or they would be looked at as uncool. Or their co-workers would say, you know what, that person's weird. They're, they're, doing, they're, getting, they're letting go of everything for heaven to be, the rich, to be in the richest, wealthiest city in the world to have the best reputation, and that's being a son and daughter of God. And friends, I don't know what category you might fall into, but Jesus told us in Matthew 6, verse 33, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Friends, if you see that Jesus has not been the first person in your life, if there have been moments where you said, you know what? I am choosing something else over heaven. 
And not choosing heaven today means you're not giving 100% and you're not on fire for God. If it's your job, if it's your work, if it's your, your looks, your, your family, whatever it may be, anything that's holding you back from Jesus, and you want to say, I want to let go of everything to make it into the kingdom of heaven, I just want you to raise your hand where you are and make a commitment. Say, Lord, I'm willing. I'm willing for you to give me the strength to let go of all these things so that I can make it to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And friends, if there's people in this audience who have said, you know what? I made the decision to follow Jesus with all my heart. But I see that there's trials along the way. And I'm afraid that if I keep on going forward, sometimes I take my eyes off of him and sometimes it gets hard. And you say, you know what? I want to make and ask the Lord to say, Lord, please give me the strength to keep going forward on the straight and narrow path. And that's you. I want you to kneel with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, you see our cries and you hear our pledges. Lord, our promises are like ropes of sand. But I'm so thankful, Lord, that your word is true and that we can hold on to Jesus. Father, thank you so much for preparing a place for us. And Lord, we long to be there. And Father, we're just asking that you'll be with us for the rest of this Sabbath. And may we truly live the rest of this Sabbath day acting as though we are looking forward to entering the kingdom of heaven. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord, and we thank you so much for drawing close to us this morning. And we ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Were you blessed by the message? I was too. If you are blessed by what God had to share with you today, you're going to be even more blessed by this afternoon's message, Bewitching Spirits. Friends, one of the things that is going to keep people out of the kingdom of heaven are the deceptions of the state of those who have passed away. If you've ever asked yourself, what happens when people die? Are the horror movies like Paranormal Activity and Nightmare on Elm Street, are those things real? Is that true? What really is taking place behind the scenes? If that is what you have wondered, you're going to want to come back this afternoon at 5 p.m. Bewitching Spirits and God's servant Joshua Holly is going to be sharing with you. Amen? Amen. Thank you for tuning in. We are so pleased you could join us for the special event here at Watch the Hills Academy and College. If you have enjoyed this presentation as much as I have, like, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to help support the making of these programs, you can find the donation information in the description below. Thank you for joining us, and may God richly bless you.